Did you know that the world needs to build one New York City per month for the next 40 years? And did you also know that the construction sector is still one of the largest emitters of CO2 emissions? My name is Frank Mauen. I'm the European Innovation Council, or EIC for short, Program Manager for Architecture, Engineering and Construction. The mission of the EIC is to back visionary entrepreneurs. The EIC bridges the gap between breakthrough technologies and wider commercial adoption. We bridge the gap between funding, but also with a range of business acceleration services, such as entrepreneurial skills and access to networks and coaching. I'm an engineer by training. In my career, I worked on major tunnel construction job sites across the world. But I also worked in various deep tech ventures, developing climate technologies. My personal mission is to make an impact on solving climate change using technology, entrepreneurship and innovation. To explain what we aim to achieve for the construction with EIC, let's reflect briefly on three major problems the construction sector faces. First, if the construction sector were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of CO2 in the world. The processing of building materials, in particular cement, is responsible for 8% of the global CO2 emissions. Concrete is also a fantastic material to build with, apart from the CO2 emissions. If you add emissions related to the use of the building, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, this figure goes up to 25%. The good news is we make good progress in the use, reducing the use emissions. Second, the sheer volume of the consumption of building materials. Some say we need to build one New York City per month for the next 40 years. True, the largest increase of consumption of building materials will come from the developing nations. But already now, concrete is the second most used material by weight after water. But because the sector is not so circular, the sector also causes 35% of the EU waste. And this excludes the CO2 emissions that I mentioned before. Um, that were already dumped as waste in our atmosphere. Just imagine that cement factories are often located close to the limestone quarries. Because if you convert limestone into cement, you lose about half of the weight as CO2 into the air. Third, labor productivity in construction has hardly grown since decades, or has even decreased. In some countries, this contrasts other major industries. Of course, productivity is important, considering competition. But all transitions we need to do, and with an aging population, the sector will increasingly need to compete for skilled labor with other sectors. Also, we shall not forget that behind these productivity numbers are humans, their experiences, and the quality of the work they do. So, the construction industry as a hugely complex supply chain that evolved over many decades. So my vision or hopes for the sector is to find transition pathways to tackle these major problems in time over the next couple of decades starting now. Now to achieve this vision at bedrock level, we need to change a paradigm by changing three related things. First, we need to change the way we design buildings and infrastructure. Second, we need to change the way we make, so fabricate and assemble buildings and infrastructure. And third, we need to change the materials we use for buildings and infrastructures. Now, again, considering the sheer volume of materials that are currently processed into buildings and infrastructure, this also means uh, to make the current cement and concrete supply chains carbon neutral with all the options available to us. Some options are deeply innovative and some options are more straightforward. But we must also embrace alternative materials, for example, bio-based materials or engineered materials. But the important takeaway is, by changing the way we design and make, we may also enable new pathways for materials we use. I often use nature to illustrate this paradigm shift. It is really inspiring and humbling to see how nature uses material from macro to macro skills. An entrepreneur once told me, 
nature uses very few materials in endlessly complex ways, whereas we humans use a lot of materials in simplistic, wasteful ways. I mean, just think about it. I'm convinced that the common denominator for these changes is a deep digitalization of the value chain of architecture, engineering and construction. What I mean by that is not only using computers to automate and optimize workflows and business processes. I particularly mean digitalization at the heart of our material expression. And this is basically what the first challenges of the architecture, engineering and construction in the work program of the EIC for 2023 are all about. I know the construction sector is conservative and there are many historic reasons and path dependencies explaining that. This is not dissimilar to, for example, the energy sector and other deep tech setter, sectors that must make transitions. It is hard, but we need to change anyways. To achieve desired change, we need to change, uh, do two things. First, we need pioneering innovators and entrepreneurs that start building our desired future, often against all odds. Second, we also need to lose the ballast of some of our old ways of doing things. This is where critical regulation, such as the European Green Deal, is a key driver. But for example, also standards and building codes. So successful innovation is as much about building the future as it is about letting go of our past. Now, one more thing. Someone told me that science changes how we view the world, engineering changes how we experience the world, and art or architecture changes how we experience ourselves. I think it is important to connect to the new European Bauhaus as the heart and soul of the transitions I described. The new European Bauhaus inspires us to build the world we, and that is all of us, want and desire to live in. The new European Bauhaus stands for beautiful, sustainable, together. Now, if you resonate with what I just said, and if you are working on a new venture that helps us solve these problems, or if you think about starting a new venture, or if you work on solutions for these problems in your domain of science, I strongly encourage you to review the EIC work program on our website. We offer funding opportunities for your entrepreneurial journey and would like to support your journey. Now, as I mentioned, this year for architecture, engineering, construction, there are two challenges, one for Pathfinder and one for Accelerator. Now, these challenges are about computational design, digitalized fabrication and materials. You can review the details of these challenges in the work program. But you can also attend one of the online information events to learn more. Or watch the recordings of these events in case you can't make it. Or you can reach out to one of the national contact points for further help. Now one last remark. If you don't fit the challenge, don't worry. I mean, it's hard to predict where the next disruptor will emerge. We equally look forward to your proposal in one of the open calls. So let's build a beautiful, sustainable future for all of us together. Thank you.